Welcome to Jeff Outdoors. We are currently indoors. <laughs> hey, real quick, thank you for liking and subscribing and uh, tuning in and uh, commenting. To all those who have commented, tuned in, and subscribed. <laughs> Hopefully we can get some more people on board. You know, I really like this channel to kind of be stuff that uh, uh, is somewhat spontaneous. Um, I know a lot of YouTubers who are uh, putting videos out at kind of a regular pace. And, you know, I get that too. But, uh, you know, with my schedule and everything, you know, I, I really look to like more spontaneous type of videos. So, Jeff Outdoors. So, I'm going to be showing outdoors things. So, I posted a video. Uh, I post some videos of just uh, things in nature. Uh, like the ants that were e eating up the raspberries, um, you know, uh, things like that. You know, somebody might be able to learn from seeing that, or maybe somebody doesn't know anything about raspberries and that ants eat raspberries. <laughs> so if you're looking to plant some raspberry bushes, um, I would recommend having some diatomaceous earth to sprinkle around the raspberry plants. So uh, and that will kill the ants from crawling up and eating all your berries. Get you thinking so uh that's kind of what i'm doing right now for this this channel and of course i do other things of course i talk you know i do gardening and maple syrup uh, and i share a lot of about the uh, amish area around here where i live and uh things like that so a little bit of a, a variety but i like kind of i like keeping things somewhat spontaneous with uh with some of the content that I put up today, we're dri I, I was driving home from uh, uh, the store uh, and uh, looking over the valley. The uh, clouds were just moving in over the cornfield, and uh, really, it was really a beautiful view in person. You know, video never really does anything justice. I don't care; <laughs> just doesn't do anything justice. So. Uh, it was nice to see a nice view of some rain clouds uh, coming over the cornfield. And um, I just thought I would take, you know, I think I took like 20 seconds of video of it and uh, posted it on the last video. So it's kind of neat, nice view. So, you know, maybe somebody out there can appreciate those types of things. Um, you know, it's kind of goes back to the reason why maybe I... In the back of my mind, I wanted to start a channel like this uh, since uh, I don't consider myself living the typical uh, American lifestyle. Um, I don't have television. I don't have internet at my house. Uh, in the summertime, uh, I stick a lot to... I do have the uh, bulbs over the... I'm at the workbench in the garage. So this is my work area. And I do have... Uh, electric lights over the workbench, uh, but I also do uh, oil lanterns in the summer uh, pretty regularly. You know, you use the lanterns, uh, you, you'd be amazed if you really sat down and, and think about how much light you need in the evening before bedtime. It's really not much. By the time you eat dinner, and this is, uh, you know, I'm talking summertime. Uh, the wintertime is a little bit different with the less amount of, you have less amount of daylight in the, in the winter. So here in the north. So you think about those things, but uh, you don't really need a lot of light. By the time you eat dinner in the summer, and then, you know, you've got a few hours. Uh, around here in the summer, it's getting dark around like 9.30, so 9.30 p.m., so you might use, you know, if you want a little bit of light for an hour before you go to bed, uh, you know, use an oil lantern instead of flicking on the electric, uh, you know, alternative sources of light. And it's not really just about that. It's not always about saving dollars and money and all that crap. You know, these lanterns, uh, they make you step back and they make you reflect on simplicity. Uh, and that's another aspect that I try to bring to this channel. And uh, maybe you 
can sense it, maybe you can't. I don't know where you are mentally. Uh, you know, <laughs> Americans work themselves to death and don't enjoy nearly anything. It's true. Whether you want to believe that statement or not, you might not be at the point where you believe that statement. You're not there yet, and that's completely fine. I hit that realization years ago. Years ago. 10, 15 years ago. I'm just, you know, you're not there yet. That's, it takes time. You might get there, you might not. Some people don't get there, but people work themselves to death. And then next thing you know, you turn around, 20 years has gone by. And what did you enjoy? You're trying to keep up the pace, trying to keep up with technology, trying to keep up, keep up, keep up, keep up. The oil lantern can have a, you know, a little bit of a uh, mental, mental break applied. It allows for that mental break to flip on. It's just a flame that's burning. And it gives light, you know. I mean, it's very simple. And there's something about that simplicity in a oil lantern with just a little flickering flame. These put out quite a bit of light. I mean, look, I can turn that up. Right, that's really high. You don't run it that high. You run it, you run it about medium right there. About right there. But uh, uh, Americans work themselves to death. There are countries in the world where people get six, eight weeks of vacation every year. And that's normal. That's normal. Uh, here in the United States, you're lucky to get a week. You're lucky to get one week of vacation in most jobs. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. And a little bit of background about me as, as I'm going forward here. Uh, just checking my time. Um, I have, I am well-traveled. Um, I have been around the world. Um, I have traveled throughout Canada, the United States. I've been to almost all 50 states. I've traveled to Ireland twice. I've been to the United Kingdom. I've been all over London. Um, and I've written some travel books about it. And they're out there. Um, uh, they're out there published. You can order them online. Uh, I might put the link down below. We'll see. Uh, I've been to France. I spent a couple weeks on the French Riviera in Nice. And in... Uh, uh, Nice is right on the border of Italy, so uh, there's a little stretch that you can take over to the border of Italy, which I did one day, and I went up into the mountains and picked olives for the day. Uh, a few years ago, uh, me and some family members went back to Sicily, which is where my grandfather was from. So I've been to Sicily, I've been to northern Italy, southern France. Uh, Australia. I spent three weeks in Australia in, on the coast of Queensland in a town called Malulaba. And I've been to Sydney, seen the Opera House, uh, been to New Zealand, uh, flew into Auckland and spent time in New Zealand. Uh, one of my favorite places is Vancouver Island. Uh, I spent a few days in Victoria and actually biked around the city. <clears throat> did some biking around uh, Vancouver Island while I was there. So that was uh, beautiful. I, I absolutely love Vancouver Island. <laughs> That's one of the places that I would, you know, consider, you know, they just had some heat out there, but <clears throat> that's one of the places I would consider uh, living. If I had, you know, somebody said, you know, here's a bunch of money. Just go ahead and move where you want. That would be a place that I would consider Vancouver Island. Uh, one of my favorite places is the UP of Michigan, the Upper Peninsula, and I absolutely love the state of Maine. Uh, New Hampshire as well, northern New Hampshire, Maine. I've been going up that way my entire life, and I absolutely love it. So I have traveled. Um, I've been around. I've been through different cultures. I spent two years 
teaching myself French before I went to France. And uh, I did quite well while I was in France. Uh, even in a touristy type of area like Nice on the, on the French Riviera, you know, there's a lot of people that speak English, but there's a lot of, there's some people that don't. And they appreciate the fact that you're trying to speak French, uh, French when you're, when you're there. And you're just not the typical, you know, tourist speaking English like some doofus, you know. Just, you know, try to speak some French. It's just polite. It's the polite thing to do. So I did that. Uh, I did that when I went to Italy. I spent a couple of years teaching myself Italian. And there's plenty of resources out there to do that. So do it. Um, but, you know, just a little bit about my background there. just thought I would share my travel history, uh, you know, here living in the United States and when you, when you travel and you look back at where you live and where you come from, your perspective is completely night and day. It's totally changed. Um, in Australia, they have something called long service leave. So if you're in a job for 10 years, once you hit the 10 year mark, you automatically get, um, like six week vacation, something like that, automatic. That's on top of what the company that you work for already gives you. So there's a lot of people, uh, you know, take eight week vacations, six, eight week vacations, or, you know, have that time off through the year to use. America, <laughs> Americans are lucky to get a week. Lucky to get a week. I know people that, have like three, three to five days of vacation for the year. I mean, <laughs> so anyways, uh, sitting here thinking about all that, thinking about simplicity, thinking about this channel and what Jeff Outdoors is, um, you know, I'm still learning with the YouTube stuff. I'm still learning about content and videos. And to be honest, I never really thought about investing any money in doing these videos. Um, I have my cell phone, and I don't have a computer or internet here at the house, and I, I tend to keep it that way. So this is probably what you're going to keep getting uh, as far as production goes for the foreseeable future. And, yeah, I'm okay with that. And, uh, you know, you want Hollywood? Go to Hollywood. Uh, to each his own. Uh some things are for some people. Some things aren't for some people. And I totally understand that. So, I'm going to sit here with my oil lanterns, some simplicity, enjoy the evening, and reflect and think about uh, heading up to New England here in the next two weeks. And it's going to be a good time. We're going to uh, probably... I'm going to try to upload some video while we're on uh, on vacation. So that's that. Hey, if you have any travel questions uh, about Ireland, London, France, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, if you have any questions on traveling, let me know because I will talk about travel uh, for hours if if somebody let me, <laughs> I've got lots of travel stories. I've got, I've saved some, my airline tickets. I've saved some, uh, travel patches that I get while I'm out and about traveling. So, uh, it's, it's been, it's been wonderful. I, I, I'm probably waiting for a while now to get back to the international travel thing. Uh, just with everything that's been going on the past year and a half with COVID, uh, the climate right now is really, I know some people are traveling, but to be honest, I don't, I don't plan on doing any international traveling for a, a while, a while. So, and that's, you know, to each his own, but that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm figuring. And it's now July, 2021. So we'll see, we'll just see how it goes. And, uh, we've come a long way with this whole situation with the COVID crap and, uh, uh, is what it is. So, uh, hey, already prepping for maple season 2022. Oh boy. Looking to get into some wood fired evaporator stuff. 
yada, 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 yada. Um, I don't mind the propane. I will continue with the propane stuff. I'm very okay with that. I would like to see what the wood-fired evaporator can do as far as uh, capacity, boil rate. Uh, you know, there's a lot to think about with a wood evaporator and boiling in the weather. You know, I've boiled in my little mini sugar shack in the rain, in a whiteout snowstorm. Um, and I'm pretty well protected when I'm out there boiling, you know. And it works out great. But, you know, the boil rate is pretty low. Uh, I'm trying to come up with a concoction here of like a mix between using a wood evaporator, where I'm going to put it, if I, what kind of shelter I'm going to have, um, yada, 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 yada. So, Maple Season 2022 is already underway up here. <laughs> so, hopefully we, get a, we have a good season. All this rain this summer around here, uh, we might uh, have an increase in sap flow. I don't know. We'll see. So, that's that. Okay. Didn't want to go too long, but uh, happy Saturday. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you like. We'll keep it real. No bollocks. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Giddy up.